20 Reasons Against Newtonianism by Ebenezer Breach 1. Because the earth has no axis, therefore nothing on which to revolve, an imaginary mathematical line is substituted, but no solid body could revolve on an imaginary axis or line. It is an imaginary cause that can only produce an imaginary effect, so all that follows such a cause must be imaginary. If anything be placed on the top of a revolving body, it will fly off at a tangent. 2. Because the Earth has no orbit. It was supposed in starting that the Earth required an orbit of 600 million miles, but it was afterwards reduced to 190 million, and even 85 million. So if it had to lose 410 million miles, it might as well lose all, and say nothing about it as we may be sure it has no orbit, axis, or poles. 3. Because it is a system that Copernicus restarted with the assertion that, quote, it was not necessary that the hypothesis be true, so long as calculations agree with calculations. But we say that if the hypothesis be not true, and data correct, all mathematical calculations are nonsense and deceptions. Mathematics becomes a demonstration of the assumed or unknown quantity. 4. Because there is but one central north star or constellation in the heavens, the diameter and circumference of the heavens are commensurate with the earth. No star has more than 90 degrees declination, so there is no nadir or point of the heavens under our feet, and no south star or constellation to match with a globular south center. That would have to be a star at 180 degrees declination. 5. Because we have no antipodes or colonials under our feet. If the Australians are facing the north center, and the Europeans are doing the same, they stand face to face, not feet to feet, like flies on a ceiling, so foolishly supposed and taught. And people actually believe it true. None more gullible than the English people. 6. Because the Earth is not an oblate spheroid, as Newton foolishly imagined and hastily decided upon by the tick of his watch. It was found to have lost a few seconds near the tropics, through heat relaxing the works, to what it gained in Paris. So the imaginative, speculative philosopher sat in his armchair, and there and then decided the Earth a spheroid, as its motion was supposed to be less at the tropics, according to the tick of his watch so all are taught to believe the spheroid ever since. The sun also is at least 2,853 miles farther from us in winter than in summer. 7. Because Newton's imagination led him to believe that if the matter of the whole earth were compressed into absolute solidity, it might be reduced to a body but a few yards in diameter, and reduced to a sphere one mile in diameter. The matter in the instertus would be but as one to 510 billion. 8. Because Newton's supposed law of gravitation was lost in the moon. Newton found that the moon's perigree ought to require 18 years to perform its revolution in the heavens, while observation showed that the revolution was actually performed in one half this period. He exhausted all his skill and power to overcome the difficulty and died leaving the problem unsolved. His successor, Clarent, also finally abandoned the law of gravitation in despair and being incapable of explanation, a problem still unsolved, a mechanical impossibility. 9. Because the inertia of matter is the stability of the universe, therefore it is absolutely false that all particles of matter attract each other according to their size and square of distance. Glass does not attract wood, nor cloth iron, nor does cotton attract wool, nor liquids attract solids, nor does fruit attract grain, and ad infinitum. 10. Because the primitive idea of simplicity is a just one, founded in nature and adopted in reason, the real object of true science should be to make the laws of nature simple, sublime, and self-evident to the people. The Creator would not direct to a right consideration of His works, knowing that they were inconsiderable and unapproachable except by the very learned, who have mystified them by their outrageous mathematical calculations, General Drayson 
rightly accuses scientific professors of arrogant and ignorant exclusiveness. 11. Because Newtonianism is entirely misleading and incorrect in picturing the orbits of the sun, moon, and planets to the uninitiated, it places the earth where the sun ought to be. In reality, the moon should be placed first as having the shortest orbit round the heavens, only 30 days. Mercury should be next, with 88 days, then Venus with 224 days, then the sun, not the earth, with 365 and a quarter days. The motion of the sun is absolute and not apparent. As Josephus states, it is driven along the circuit of heaven by necessity. Venus gets round quicker than the sun, and is able to be a morning or evening star. Mr. Norman Lockyer, in his Primer, declares the sun to be the nearest star. So a sunny day is starshine, not sunshine. 12. Because the foundation of modern astronomy is laid on Newton's fiat that, quote, the sun is the center of the solar system and immovable. But Sir William Herschel discovered that it had a movement towards Hercules, and the downfall of modern astronomy ought at once to have been announced. The late R. A. Proctor and all now declare the motion of the sun thus, quote, it climbs the eastern sky, slides down in the west, moves slowly towards the north quarter of the heavens, and moves away from overhead at the equator to the southern quarter of the heavens from September to December. There could be no power in the sun without motion. 13. Because the system introduces and calculates by millions, billions, trillions of miles in distances that never existed, thus the planet Neptune is said to be 2,755,000,000 miles distant from the sun, yet it has to derive its light from the sun, and must be near it to do so. The fact is, a simple curve, called the ecliptic, marks out the pathway of the sun, moon, and planets among the fixed stars. They never leave this pathway. It is not 2,000 miles broad, and as the sun travels at the rate of 900 miles per hour, 900 times 24 equals 22,600, so that no planet can ever be farther from the sun than 25,000 miles, not even when it is 23.5 degrees to the north or south solstice. Where is there billions, millions, and trillions? Space is the extension of matter. Where matter ends, space ends. 14. Because though everything in the solar system is measured according to the assumed measurement of the sun, yet astronomers have widely differed in the measurement of that indispensable and solitary body. Pythagoras took it to be 45,000 miles distant. Two or three have made a second guess after their first measurement. Sir Isaac did, and it has been measured from 45,000 up to 112 million miles distant and all were supposed to measure by mathematical calculation, and Newtonianism has an innate conception that authority ought to be silent before reason. Its prevailing philosophy is perfectly ridiculous, but prejudice, and custom throws a veil over it, and prevents its deformity from being perceived. Setting aside nature's facts, cocksureness is master of the field. 15. Because in meeting Professor Hegarty, one morning in Portsmouth, to whom we were introduced by a scientist as the gentleman that believed the earth to be flat, he informed us that, quote, the astronomers had found out they had been making a mistake of 100 million miles in the parallax of the sun. After informing him of my researches and measurements of the sun's distances, he remarked, well, it would all amount to the same thing if measured only a few thousand miles distant. This professor had spent most of his life in the telescope rooms, reading our fifty scientific facts, made no particular objection, but thought it was possible for a grain of dust to eclipse the town hall. When we told him how impossible it would be for eclipses to occur according to their measurement of the heavenly bodies, he was confused and amazed. 16. Because no philosopher can be considered a real astronomer who has not a right understanding of the physical construction of the earth and heavens, that they are two parallels, one above the other, the two plates, that the sun is not more than half the diameter of the earth, the moon one quarter, the largest of the planets or stars not more than 100 miles in diameter, 
as proved by the occultation of Jupiter, and would most probably range from ten to a hundred miles in diameter. That the Earth is ten thousand miles in diameter, not eight thousand, as that is only the length of North and South America. And what of the oceans beyond? Newton was a thoughtful scientist, but not an astronomer, though he is by some considered as the only scientific trustee of the universe. 17. Because Newtonianism takes away the necessity of a firm crystal sky, for crystal light giving bodies to revolve upon. The sky is a fixed canopy over the earth. You are quite right, said a Jewish rabbi to me, according to the Hebrew. Certain it is, had there been revolution and the earth a globe, the Jews were bound to have known it. So were the Chaldeans, and patriarchs with Adam, the first man who understood the physical construction of nature intuitively, and Josephus's assertions are dead against the astronomers. 18. Because the waterfalls of Niagara are against a revolving earth. It never turns its streams in an opposite direction, but always has a constant perpendicular flow. All wells would be emptied if a revolution occurred. The sands of the desert would be gone. All articles, fruit, etc., on the tradesmen's boards would disappear in two minutes. And where would Jacob's ladder have been, or any other ladder? No clock would give correct time, as the perpendicular action of the pendulum must not vary the one hundredth part of an inch. Ask Mr. Belitho, Queen Street, Portsea, the watchmaker and jeweler. There could be no standing fogs with the atmosphere in motion. 19. Because whether the sun is shining and traveling in the northern or southern part of its spiral course in the heavens, the moon always reflects her light the same. So the sun can never at any time be under the earth, as many Newtonians suppose, but ever has its position on a parallel sky, with the moon, planets, and heavenly bodies, none of which are ever more than five or six thousand miles from the earth. 20. Because the Newtonian system was introduced and supported by heathens, infidels, and skeptical astronomers, and we are compelled to acknowledge that our philosophers that have followed such a system have not taken the right road, but a road full of the brambles of stupidity, unreality, monstrosity, sheer imagination, bewildering labyrinths of calculations, stumbling over phenomena that never existed, measurements that will never be realized, with endless deceptions and contradictions. But in nature there are no contradictions. The sooner such a system is abolished as a compulsory system, the better. It will all go for smoke in that day when God restores the world now fallen with mankind into perfection. Quote, the earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved, I will re-establish it. They that will not believe shall not be able to exalt themselves. There is a most deplorable famine of common sense on this important subject in the universities and Greenwich, also at Whitehall, consequently throughout the land. But this is the age of inquiry. Many shall investigate, and knowledge, which must be truth, shall be increased.